There are examples when we can experimentally know the probability of E given F, but in practice we need to reverse this and determine the probability of F given E. The way that we do this turns out to be relatively simple. The theorem which gives us our desired result is called Bayes' theorem. It says that if E and F are events, then we can compute the probability of F given E in terms of E given F as follows. And as I mentioned, this equation isn't that hard to find. We already know that we can use conditional probability to write down the probability that E and F occur. Moreover, this can be written as either E given F or as F given E. So let's plug this into our conditional probability equation. Now for Bayes' theorem, we're going to use the top equation, but you should try plugging in the bottom equation just to see what happens. But there we have it, plugging in the top equation gives us Bayes' theorem. Let's do an example. So let's say you're the captain of the guard and you're hiring for a new position. Unfortunately, a good chunk, 5% of the townspeople, are addicted to skooma, a nasty drug. Now luckily you have a skooma test, which correctly identifies users 95% of the time and non-users 90% of the time. So a fellow by the name of Jesper has applied, but unfortunately he's tested positive for the drug. What is the probability that he's actually a skooma user? Let's start by setting up event names for everything. S will stand for skooma users, while NS is not a skooma user. TP will be those who test positive, and TN will be those who test negative. Both SNS and TPTN form partitions of our space, as you can quickly convince yourself. With this in hand, then, what does the problem statement tell us? Well, we know that 5% of the city uses skooma, so in turn 95% must not. The other stat we know is the accuracy of the test. Knowing that the test accurately identifies users 95% of the time says that the probability of testing positive given that you use skooma is 0.95. Accurately identifying non-users 90% of the time says that the probability of testing negative given that you don't use is 0.90. From this, we can determine the corresponding complementary probabilities. Now, given that we know Jesper tests positive, we want to know the probability that he's actually a skooma user. We want to know the probability of S given TP. Applying Bayes' theorem to this, gives us the following equation. Two of these three things we know, but we need to find the probability that a randomly selected person tests positive regardless of condition. To do this, we can use the law of total probability. So the probability of testing positive depends on whether you're a skooma user or not, and we can evaluate it as such. I'm just gonna leave this in exact form right now. Uh, we'll evaluate it at the end. Okay, so we plug everything into our formula, and then we're going to throw those numbers into a calculator, and we're going to get an, out an answer of one-third. Now think about this number. This is crazy. The test has a greater than 90% accuracy of correctly identifying a user and a non-user, but despite that, if you test positive, there's still only a 1 in 3 chance that you're actually an addict, and that number seems really, really low. Think about why that's true. 